Goblin launch detected. Hey gang, using the promo code MTGMUDSTA, all caps, will get you 10% off any order over $10 at Flipside Gaming. It'll also get you 10% off any orders of singles at Multizone. And it'll get you 10% off most products at Original Magic Art, with the exceptions of some paintings. If these fine sites don't have what you're looking for, you can also consider using my affiliate link when ordering from TCG Player. And if you'd like to join the Generic Goblin Gang to support this channel, there's a link to my Patreon in the description below. Hey gang, and welcome to one of the very first games that I filmed when I moved to Ottawa. Today's game is filmed at Multizone, and it features Nick, Martin, and Max. I am playing my Krenko deck, keeping three snow-covered mountains, Mutavault, Umbral Mantle, Ruination, and Vandal Blast. Nick is playing his Chandra deck, keeping Chain Reaction, Humble Defector, Wayfarer's Bobble, and three mountains. Max is playing Varchild, keeping two mountains, Ghost Quarter, Skull Clamp, Hanawar Garrison, Shared Animosity, and Swiftfoot Boots. Martin is playing his Liliana, keeping a Raider's Wake, Decree of Pain, Black Sun Zenith, Hell's Caretaker, Cabal Stronghold, and two snow-covered swamps. Martin wins the die roll and starts us off. Martin plays a swamp. Max plays a tap forgotten cave. I play a snow-covered mountain. Nick plays a mountain and casts his Wayfarer's Bobble. Martin plays a swamp and casts Reassembling Skeleton. Max plays a mountain and casts Swiftfoot Boots. I play a Mutavolt and cast a very glared out Goblin Piledriver. Nick plays a mountain and passes, activating his Bobble as he does so. Martin plays a Cabal Stronghold and pays 3 for Liliana. I ask him to get a closer look at the San Diego Comic Con promo as he passes to Max. Max plays a mountain and casts Farchild, and with nothing else, he passes. I play Tap Valakut and cast Ruby Medallion. I swing the Pile Driver at Nick for 1 and pass. Nick plays a mountain and casts Chandra before passing. Martin draws for turn, and also swings at Nick once he moves to combat, hitting him with Liliana. Martin then pays one black for a Blood Chief Ascension. At the end of turn, he gets to put a counter onto the Ascension. Max plays a Ghost Quarter and pays to cast a Hanawar Garrison. He pays the one to equip it with the Swiftfoot Boots and goes to combat. He swings both of his creatures at Martin, which triggers the Garrison to make two 1-1 one -one Red Humans that are tapped and attacking. Martin blocks the garrison with a skeleton, and takes the rest. With Varchild connecting, Martin then creates three 1-1 one -one red survivor tokens, and since the skeleton dies, gets to transform Liliana and makes a zombie token, and with nothing else, Max passes. I play a snow-covered mountain, and tap enough for Krenko, trying and failing to find a place without glare. I pass to Nick rather than risk giving the ascension another counter, and we move to Nick's turn. Nick plays a mountain, and taps Chandra to deal 1 to Liliana. Nick then casts a Humble Defector, which untaps Chandra. We see her being tapped again and doing another point of damage to Liliana. Nick then casts Magus of the Wheel, before retapping her again to do the final point of damage to Liliana, and Martin transforms the Planeswalker back into a creature, putting it to the yard. This also transforms Chandra into Chandra Roaring Flame, and Nick then upticks the Planeswalker once she's flipped dealing two to Martin. Martin draws and plays a snow-covered swamp for turn. He swings the zombie at Max and the survivors at Chandra. Nick blocks one of the survivors, with Chandra losing two loyalty, and Max has no choice but to take the hit. Martin then casts a Hell's Caretaker in his post-combat main phase, and he passes, adding a counter at the end of turn to the Blood Chief Ascension. Max casts Tenza Goto's Maul in his main phase, paying the one to equip it onto Varchild as it enters. This pumps his commander by plus three plus three and gives her Trample, and like any red player worth his salt, he goes straight to combat. He swings Varchild at me and the rest at Martin, gaining two more humans attacking, which he also sends at Martin from the Hanawar Garrison. Martin and I then both take the full hits, with my gaining six survivor tokens because Varchild hits me for six, while Martin takes six and doesn't get anything. 
Max then passes, with Martin gaining the third and final counter needed for his ascension. I play a snow-covered mountain and think about where to swing. I'm tempted to go at Nick, who tells me that if I ever want to be considered as a target for the humble defector, he better not see any survivors headed his way. I take this threat seriously and just decide to pass to Nick. Nick draws and taps his defector, drawing two more and passing it to me. He plays a mountain for turn and pays four mana for Pyrohemia. He then upticks Chandra again, dealing two more damage to Martin, and passes. Martin activates his Hell's Caretaker on his upkeep, sacrificing a survivor to bring back his commander, which he'd strategically placed in his yard when she died. He then draws for turn, but is struggling on mana. He casts a Blood Artist, and with the Vampire on the stack, Nick activates the Pyrohemia once. This takes out a bunch of creatures, and Liliana does make a zombie as the Caretaker goes to the yard, and then transforms. The Pyrohemia deals one to everyone and everything, and Martin then upticks Liliana, causing his opponents to discard a card, which the Ascension sees Martin's opponents doing, and drains us for two each, while Martin gains a total of six. Martin then plays an Asylum Visitor, and thinks about attacking. He decides against it, and passes. Before letting him go to the end step, Nick activates the Pyrohemia again, dealing one to every one and each creature. This has a bunch of creatures dying, with the Blood Artist giving Martin four triggers. Martin drains Max for four, and I get drained for two from my pile driver going to the yard and the Ascension seeing it. Max untaps and draws, and he starts off his turn right by casting Shared Animosity, and goes to attack with everything at Martin. He layers the triggers to resolve the garrison first, so that when the Shared Animosity triggers resolve, the garrison and Varchild will see three other humans pumping them up by plus three plus zero each. The zombie chumps the garrison, while Martin takes nine from Varchild, and another two from the humans. Martin then gains nine survivor tokens, and in his second main phase, Max then casts Skull Clamp. He passes, and at the end of turn, I tap Krenko to make a goblin token. I draw for turn, and cast Dragon Fodder, making two more goblin tokens, and I get drained for two as the Ascension sees the Dragon Fodder go to my graveyard. I then use Vandal Blast to take out Max's Skull Clamp, and this time Max and I get drained for two each. Having done enough damage to myself, I decide to pass to Nick. Nick is considering using the Magus of the Wheel, which Martin is all for, but Max and I are not. He casts Marari in his main phase, and then swings the Magus at Liliana after we realize the survivors can't block. He then upticks Chandra to take out Liliana once more, and Martin has her go to the yard again, with Nick passing turn. Martin draws, and has no land for turn still. He does have the four needed to cast Dread Return, which he does cast to bring back Liliana. Martin then casts the Dread Return from the flashback cost, sacrificing three creatures to bring back his Hell's Caretaker. He then goes to combat, swinging his survivors at Nick, who activates the Pyrohemia once. Every one and everything minus Planeswalkers take one, and with creatures dying on his side of the board, Martin is able to transform Liliana again and make a zombie token. Once combat is over, he upticks her, having everyone discard a card, and drains each of his opponents for two, gaining six life total as we do from the Ascension. Max plays Onaganata in his main phase, and equips it onto Varchild. He thinks about taking Martin out, but with Martin having so much commander damage already for Varchild, Max wants to see if he can squeeze out a bit more drain from the Ascension on Nick and I. He swings Varchild at Nick, and the garrison at me stacking his triggers again to resolve the garrison first, and then the shared animosity. He has the tokens from the garrison also go at Nick. This has Nick taking 15, gaining 13 survivor tokens from Varchild connecting, and I take the 5. At the end of turn, I tap the Mutavolt to activate it to become a creature. I then tap Krenko to make two goblin tokens, and we move to my turn. I play a snow-covered mountain for turn, and consider casting Coat of Arms, which I immediately decide against. I cast an Umbral Mantle instead, paying to equip it onto Krenko, and I pass to Nick. Nick draws and goes to combat, swinging his survivors at Martin. Martin blocks one of them, but still takes the 12 from the unblocked. Nick then puts to stack a Chain Reaction, but before letting it resolve, he activates the Magus of the Wheel now that most of us have much smaller hands. Max has one creature and two cards go to the graveyard, getting drained for six from the Ascension. 
Nick has the same, because tokens aren't actually cards, so they don't trigger the ascension, and I only have one card from hand go to the graveyard and get drained for two. Nick then plays a tap Valakut as his land for turn, and he upticks his commander to deal two to Martin before passing. Martin plays a tap Myriad Landscape, and we realize the Pyrohemia should be gone since Nick's end step as there are no creatures on board. Martin then plays out a Cryptcast, and then upticks Liliana, having everyone discard a card. This once more has his ascension, gaining him 6 while he drains his opponents for 2 each. Max plays a Terrain Generator for turn, and plays out Chandra Torch of Defiance. He down ticks her by 3 loyalty to deal 4 damage to the Cryptcast on Martin's side. He then passes to me. I draw, and put out a Snow-Covered Mountain for turn. I cast Ashling's Prerogative, and pick the choice of evens, which means everything with an even cost comes in with haste, while everything with an odd one comes in tapped. I then pay 3 mana for Mana Echoes, because the Rumi Medallion is reducing the cost by 1 colorless. I then play out a very glared out Goblin Churgeon, followed by a similarly glared out Goblin King. They come in tapped because they're an odd converted mana cost, and I pass to Nick. Nick plays a Mountain, and deals 3 to Martin with the Balakut trigger seen it enter. Nick then casts a tapped Ember Maw Hellion, and upticks Chandra, dealing 2, plus the 1 from the Hellion, for a total of 3. He then passes to Martin. Martin plays a snow-covered swamp, and down ticks Liliana to bring back the Cryptcast. He taps some swamps to help activate the Cabal Stronghold for 4 black mana, and plays No Mercy, and then Yeheni, who comes in tapped. The Cryptcast has haste because of my enchantment, and Martin takes full advantage of this by smashing his Cryptcast into Chandra. Max recasts Varchild, who comes in tapped. He makes more mana with Chandra, and equips Varchild with his gear before passing to me. I play a Snow-Covered Mountain, which triggers my Valakut this time, and I target the Cryptcast with a trigger. Martin floats 2 mana from the Snow-Covered Swamp, and uses it to activate his Myriad Landscape, and then puts the gas to Yard. I then pay 5 for a reduced costing Krenko, who comes in, and I get some colorless from the Mana Echoes. I equip Krenko with the Umbral Mantle, tapping him because he has haste, and make 3 Goblin Tokens. The Goblin tokens enter, and I make a boatload of colorless mana thanks to the Mana Echoes, which allows me to pay to activate the Mantle to untap Krenko. This effectively gives me an infinite loop, and all of my tokens have haste because of the prerogative. The guys see this, and know they're done for, scooping it up. Game review time! So, I don't think anyone was surprised going into a game with three red decks that it was going to be a quick one, and it certainly was. A lot of damage was dealt thanks to Pyrohemia, Chandra, and various goblins and tokens that were made either by Max or by myself. It also didn't help that we had an active Blood Chief Ascension on the field, and frankly the only way that any of the red decks could have dealt with it was with a Chaos Warp. It put a lot of pressure on the red players, and basically was going to punish us for any kind of our card draw, because red typically involves discarding as much as drawing. I'd say the only disappointing part about this game was the unfortunate amount of glare I had on my side of the table. At the time we were shooting this, I hadn't quite figured out the best place to film in Multizone, and I've since remedied this. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11am Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash MTGMudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at twitch.tv slash MTGMudsta. This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.